Hi, Alan Stratton here from CostMatters.com. Modern computer technology gives us the ability to model our businesses in computer software. These models enable us to view, understand, and explore relationships that would otherwise be unknown or unclear. A variety of modeling techniques enables a range of possible results, but also requires a range of work effort to create and maintain a model. A good basic business model depicts three essential elements – resources, activities, and results. Resources represent what we spend to hire people, acquire equipment, rent facilities, purchase supplies, etc. Activities represent the work that our people and equipment do. These activities consume the resources that we spend money on. Results for this model are products that we make, services that we deliver, and customers that we serve. In a simple business, we pay suppliers and employees and sell to customers. In a complex business, we may need to add internal suppliers, products, services, and customers. The real value and the effort required to create this model is in representing the relationships within the model. On the simple end of the range or spectrum of, of modern modeling for relationships within the business is what many modelers call push modeling. In push modeling, we start with known costs, usually from the general ledger. We then identify measures and collect data that reflects how activities consume resources. Then, once the cost of activities is calculated, we identify measures and collect data that reflects how resulting products, services, and customers consume those activities. This results in a model where the cost of resources, activities, and results are now known. This cost is combined with revenue and quantities of products sold in order to analyze profitability. On the complex end of the modeling spectrum is pull modeling. In pull modeling, we work in the opposite direction from the push. We start with the quantities needed for products, services, and customers. We relate these results to activities by determining a consumption rate that expresses how much of each activity is required for one unit of a given product or service. With this information, we calculate how much of each activity is required. Once activities are completed, we relate the activities to resources, again with consumption rates, now expressing how much of each resource is required for one unit of activity. For example, knowing that an employee takes two hours to complete one activity is a consumption rate. Now adding the unit cost of resources, all costs can be calculated. A pull model is an ideal and very powerful. A pull model incorporates capacity. Once built, it is a dynamic business model that enables exploring capacity and optimizing different alternatives or scenarios. It can realistically show internal relationships and can be used for planning and budgeting. A pull model makes sense to most people. However, a pull model comes at a price. It requires estimating a large number of consumption rates, few of which are typically already known. With these rates, a model can be difficult to validate and balance. And when large quantities are involved, small rate errors can have dramatic impacts. The bottom line here is that a pull model is a lot more work than a push model, but may be worth the cost. A push model is often easier to validate and balance. Known resource costs are pushed to activities validated, and then these known activity costs are pushed to products, services, and customers. This makes this type of model self-balancing. Any error is dampened by the network of relationships. This makes a push model easier to implement. In fact, due to the difficulty in validating a pull model, a push model of the same business is often one of the best validation tools for a pull model. For these reasons, many businesses start with a push model, 
use it to learn their initial lessons and to provide inputs to make initial management decisions. For some, this is enough. Modern software enables elements of both modeling styles under the umbrella of activity-based cost modeling. Some software providers emphasize their own sweet spot in the spectrum between the two styles. They may even coin a new name for their technique. However, recognizing the entire spectrum or range of modeling techniques enables businesses to cut through software marketing rhetoric to determine what they need to support decision-making in their own environment. What's your experience modeling your company? Please share it below the post at costmatters.com. When cost matters, profits soar. This is Alan Stratton from costmatters.com. Thank you.